So, welcome back to another episode. This is one of those difficult episodes about death. Now, death is a difficult subject. We all hate to think about it. We all hate to deal with it. When someone dies, it's just a terrible thing. But the Bible presents a very different view of death than we normally think about. <laughs> so, I know it's a negative subject and people don't want to hear about it. But let's hear what the Bible says. They actually talk quite positively about death. So let's hear what the Bible says. Let's learn together. So here's some verses about death from the Bible. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 14. But we don't want you to be ignorant, brothers, concerning those who have fallen asleep so that you don't grieve like the rest, who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. 15 to 16. For this we tell you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will in no way precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with God's trumpet. The dead in Christ will rise first. 4.17 Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will all be with the Lord forever. 418. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. 2 Corinthians 416. Therefore, we don't faint, but though our outward person is decaying, yet our inward person is renewed day by day. Hebrews 2, 14 to 15. Since then the children have shared in flesh and blood. He also himself, in the same way, partook of the same, that through death he might bring to nothing him who had the power of death, that is, the devil, and might deliver all of them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Hosea 13, 14 I will ransom them from the power of Sheol. I will redeem them from death. Death, where are your plagues? Sheol, where is your destruction? Isaiah 25, 8. He has swallowed up death forever. The Lord Yahweh will wipe away tears from off all faces. He will take the reproach of his people away from off all the earth, for Yahweh has spoken it. John 3, 14 to 15. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John eight fifty one. Most certainly, I tell you, if a person keeps my word, he will never see death. John eleven twenty five to 26 Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will still live, even if he dies. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Proverbs 14, 32. The wicked is brought down in his calamity, but in death the righteous have a refuge. Psalm 23, 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
Psalm 48, 14. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide, even to death. Psalm 49, 15. But God will redeem my soul from the power of Sheol, for he will receive me. Selah. Psalm 73, 26. My flesh and my heart fails, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Revelation 21, 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Neither will there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. The first things have passed away. Romans 5, 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we will be saved from God's wrath through him. Romans 8, 38 to 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from God's love, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 42 to 44. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is also a spiritual body. 1 Corinthians 15, 55. Death, where is your sting? Hades, where is your victory? May God add blessing to the reading of his word. Well, now for our new modern expression. This is the expression, the powers that be. So we usually talk about the people who are above us. The powers that be have decided that there's no more coffee <laughs> during working hours. So the definition is talking about the people who are in control. This comes from Romans 13.1. Let every soul be in subjection to the higher authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those who exist are ordained by God. So, the powers that be.